This lesson is on factoring using the distributive property. This is the most basic type of factoring that we're going to see, and it's the one you should always start with first. So previously, in the last half of the unit, we had learned how to multiply polynomials together. What we're going to be doing now is essentially reversing the process. I'm going to give you that multiplied out polynomial, and you're going to do what's called factoring to get it into those binomials or trinomials or monomials that make up what we used to multiply. So there's two steps to factoring using the distributive property. The first part is you must always find the GCF first. So I want you to always find the GCF first. And then two is you're going to divide each term by the GCF. So our process, let me repeat, you must always find the GCF first. So we're going to find the GCF and then divide each term by the GCF. So in our last lesson, I taught you to, how to find the GCF by doing upside down division. Now I can show you why that method is so great because it essentially does this factoring using the distributive property for you already. So remember how we said we're putting our, our numbers and our x's, or our variables, and finding the GCF of each. We're now going to look at them kind of together. I have 12x squared, and I have 16x. I still want you to take the same logic. Just look at the numbers first. Let's start with the numbers, 12 and 16. So I'm going to start with 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6, and I'm going to carry down the x squared. 2 goes into 16 8 times, and I'm going to carry down the x. Well, we see again that 2 works. So 6 divided by 2 is 3, and I'm going to carry down the x squared. 8 divided by 2 is 4, and I'm going to carry down the x. Well, now I have 3 and 4. I have that prime number. 3 doesn't go into 4, so I know I'm done with the numbers. But now I'm going to look at the letters. I've got x squared and x. Is there a letter that goes into both? Hopefully you're thinking x. So I'm going to keep my carry down my number, 3, and x squared divided by x is x. Well, 4x divided by x is 4. Is there a letter that goes into both of these? No. Is there a number that goes into both of these? No. So I'm done. Well, from looking at this, I know my GCF is going to be these numbers on the side. So 2 times 2 times x. So I'm going to have 4x. But now what we're doing, remember step one, you must always find the GCF first. So we're essentially going to take out the GCF and in parentheses write the remainder. Because step two, you divide each term. So 12x squared, we would divide by 4x. 16x, we would divide by 4x. And that's what you would write inside the parentheses. However, We've already done that through this process. Our remainders are written right here. So we're going to put in 3x, and we're going to put in 4. Because 4 is positive, it's going to be 3x plus 4. If 4 had been negative, it would have been 3x minus 4. So what we essentially did was we did the distributive property backwards. We took out this 4x because it was common between both terms. And then we have the remainder on the inside. Just to check our answer, and no, you don't have to do this every time unless you want to make sure that you're doing it correct, which would be awesome. To check our answer, we would do the actual distributive property. 4x times 3x plus 4x times 4. Well, 4x times 3x, 4 times 3 is 12, x times x is x squared, plus 4x times 4, 
4 times 4 is 16, and we have x. If it matches this answer, then we did it correct. So our final answer, when you are asked to factor using the distributive property, is this, 4x times parentheses 3x plus 4. Looking at this example, we have 16x plus 4y. So step one, find the GCF. So we're going to have 16x, 4y. I'm going to start with my numbers, and I'm going to look. Is there a number that goes into both 16 and 4? We always start with 2. So 16 divided by 2 is 8. I'm going to keep the x. And 4 divided by 2 is 2, and I'm going to keep the y. Doing that again, we see 2. 8x divided by 2 is 4x. 2y divided by 2 is y. So there's no more numbers that go into both. So now we're going to look at variables. Is there a letter that goes into both of these? There's not. We have x and we have y. There's nothing common between those two, so we are done. The GCF is our outside two terms, 2 times 2, which is 4. So to find a factor using the distributive property, we're going to put our GCF on the outside and put our remainders on the inside. Well, our remainders are this. So it's going to be 4x plus y. Again, since there's no negative there, it's going to be positive. And that's our final answer. I want you to pause the video and try this one on your own. We now have three terms. Take your time, do the numbers, do the variables, and then see if you can factor using the distributive property. Okay. So we have 3x cubed y minus 9xy squared plus 36xy. So I'm going to write those terms. I'm going to keep my negative. And I'm going to start with my numbers. Is there a number that goes into all of these? Hopefully you said yes, 3. And I'm going to divide, and I'm going to get x cubed y, negative 3xy squared, and 12xy. Looking again, are there any numbers that go into all three? Hopefully you said no, so I'm now going to look at my variables. Is there a letter that's in all three of these? Yes, x. x cubed divided by x is x squared y. Minus 3, x divided by x is 1, so minus 3y squared. And 12xy divided by x is 12y. Looking again, is there another letter? Well, x doesn't work, but y does. So I'm going to take out a y, and I'm going to have x squared, negative 3y, and 12. Now, is there anything common between the rest of this? No. So I'm going to take my, <clears throat> my GCF, which is out here, put it on the outside, and write my remainders on the inside. 3xy times x squared minus 3y plus 12. And that's my final answer. Looking at one more example, I have negative 6x squared y squared. So I'm going to write this out. 18x squared y and negative 24. So I'm going to look for what number goes into all of these. I'm going to start with Two, but what did I say in the last lesson about if the first term's a negative? Hopefully you're thinking to yourself, you have to take out a negative 1. So we're going to start with that, and we're going to get 6x squared, y squared, negative 18x squared, y, and positive 24. Now I can look, and I see 2 isn't going to go into all of these, so I have 3x squared, y squared, negative 9x squared y, and 12. Well, looking again, I see 2 doesn't work, but 3 does. So I'm left with x squared y squared, negative 3x squared y, and positive 4. Now looking at the variables, I see because of this positive 4 here with no variables, there's going to be nothing we can take out. So my GCF is negative 1 times 3 times 2, which is negative 6. So we're going to take that out and write our remainders. x squared, y squared, 
minus 3x squared y plus 4. And that's our final answer. Remember, we always want this first term to be positive. It's going to help you out for future lessons, so please make sure to take out a negative 1 whenever this first term is negative. And that's it.